Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War Who's the Boss event in which the Lord Archmedus is added to the game, and happy Easter week everyone! Of course, uh, we do have a few things going on in the game related to Easter, like the pet this Wednesday, uh, we have the little bit extra souls from the uh, destroying the bunny uh, throughout your battles, and a few other things like the event calendar as they normally have. Uh, aside from that, let's start getting into all the normal weekly stuff. So a bunch of brown uh, yellow arcanes you can stock up on, which is really nice. Uh, they're only 200 glory each, so you can stock up uh, quite a bit if you need them to still trade anything. As far as the troop itself, it's uh, pretty underwhelming. It deals some scatter damage uh, boosted by Forest of Thorns troops at a 6 boost ratio, so for every Forest of Thorns troop, including itself, uh, it will end up doing 6 additional damage. Uh, overall, this is pretty bad, even in the context of Arena. That's not a particularly high amount of damage, because realistically you're only going to have like maybe 2 max. Uh, and even 12 extra damage in that context isn't really much. And outside of that context, it is extremely not that much. Especially when you compare it like Rowane, which is in the exact same kingdom. That uh, even an early game would do more boost ratio than this guy's uh, total amount of extra damage. And it also silences the first enemy, which is okay. However, there are already a lot of yellows, particularly brown yellows. They can already do that, particularly hero weapons. So not really much of a need to have this thing on your team in order to do such a thing. Not to mention his traits are basically useless with nothing being particularly good. Especially since he is just an epic... So he doesn't have any kind of unique trait to kind of stand out a little bit. It's just a very average underwhelming troop that is pretty much never going to be used to do anything other than get Forest of Thorns and another star. Which as of this week it can now reach a 22 star. Uh, with that being said, uh, of course we do have the Forest of Thorns event key uh, drop table uh, this week. Which has a couple okay drops. Uh, the main things that you kind of want to be looking out for. Well as far as what's not in the drop table. Let's go over uh, that first. So everything, actually let's do it by base rarity so we can see the things. But uh, as far as what is not in the drop table, it is simply just the four uh, troops from the Primal Rift. Uh, aside from that, everything else is indeed in the event key drop table that you see here. Uh, the most noteworthy things to end up picking up is probably King uh, Alvarlon. And if you can get copies to finally max out your Rowan, can end up being pretty good. Of course, Rowan being absolutely insane as a damage option. Uh, main thing that makes her really viable is that she has a boost ratio based on all of her armor. And uh, that includes all your armor. So even if you're getting like 24 extra armor from setting those medals, those guard medals, which are super easy to obtain, that alone is already 40 additional damage, which is pretty much as much as our base damage right now, at least this late in the game. But uh, she gets a lot of extra value. Uh, she's among one of the better damage sources in the entire game, especially for a lower rarity option. And uh, is good for those lower level explorers as well, like explorer level 3, 4, 5. Uh, basically the kill range where um, Phoenicia... Um, like basically the kill range where Rowan can kill up to. She's better than Phoenicia due to her lower uh, mana cost, so really, really good quick kill option that you tend to use pretty much throughout the entire game and even in post-game, or, you know, once you've um, pretty much have nearly everything. She is still viable, uh, like for Tuesday factions and stuff like that, so to be able to max her, she doesn't get much for being maxed, but every little bit of extra damage counts, if nothing else. Uh, King Avalon is mostly just used for Guild Wars, uh, though there are a few elf teams that you can kind of use. We did just get an elf exploding weapon um, the other week as well, or the other weekend, so he has become a little bit more viable as well, because of that. Uh, however, he's primarily used in various elf teams, most notably life and death with weaver combination is probably its main purpose. Empower, um, uh, empower with uh, life and death or weaver, followed by a racking weaver and then King Avalon or something similar along those lines is pretty much the main and almost only purpose of King Avalon, uh, though occasionally can be used in some other elf contexts, like uh, for some events this week, if nothing else, to be able to use that. You have a first turn in Tangle, which is really good with Skull Spam, which you can end up getting off of Salvani Mora. Uh, very situationally used in the current state of the game because Elementalist just does basically that, but better uh, in a way. However, um, it, it's still good with Skull Spam because it auto entangles your first the first enemy. And one really nice thing is it does retroactively retarget the first enemy. So for example, let's say you take an extra turn skull and that extra turn skull killed what is currently the first enemy. The entangle will retroactively actually entangle the second enemy then instead of wasting it on the first enemy that you just killed. Which is the main reason why Salvini Moore is occasionally used in skull spam teams. Uh, with how many more ways there are to entangle since this thing has come out it has become increasingly less relevant. However, it's still applicable for uh, very heavy skull spam teams that just really want entangle guaranteed on the first enemy. Like if you're fighting in an area that, you know, um, doesn't have as much immunity where you know they're going to have like 500 something attack. Uh, it can be kind of useful to have that guarantee and tangle. Aside from that, the mythics here are pretty underwhelming and not really something you're going to be uh, using much. So uh, you can pretty much ignore them for the most part as uh, they are not really either um, used. Uh, because uh, Yasmin's Chosen is normally used, Wild Queen is used instead in most situations. 
And King Bloodwood just doesn't really do anything too relevant, just kind of like a heavy damage uh, splash kind of thing. Uh, it does have like a bleed and tangle on it, but there are better ways to bleed as well as better ways to entangle. And while it does technically do both of them simultaneously, you can do both of them independently uh, much more efficiently off of uh, other troops, making it not really as realistic to use in most situations. Overall, definitely a week that you throw some event keys on, though I wouldn't go too crazy with it, as most of the drops that are really, really relevant, like Forest Troll, King Avalon, um, maybe Salvania Mora, Rowane, stuff like that. They're all lower rarity stuff that you uh, should be able to get pretty easily. So um, this is like your main priority. Most of the mythics here, you uh, unless you're getting it for kingdom upgrading purposes, you don't really need to worry about too much. So next thing on our list, of course, we have ourselves the uh, Wise Owl uh, Ward event, which is pretty straightforward. You can just end up doing it in rarity uh, order. Uh, as far as restriction, it is a uh, Forest of Thorns restriction. Uh, some of the better options, as we kind of already mentioned, as we're going through event keys, includes things like um, uh, Rowane, uh, you can use the Mythics if you really want a high damage burst. If you are going to use one, I'd probably go down the Yasmin route, uh, because there's a lot of ways to create green here, like Forest Troll into a um, Yasmin's Chosen. You can end up doing a lot of green and kind of getting a bit of a loop going. So some kind of combo like that, or just building entirely around Rowan, are probably your two best ways uh, forward. And keep in mind, you can utilize Half Mana Start on most of this kingdom using a Elf Half Mana Start. So if you want to go down that route, you have that as an option uh, as well. And overall, pretty straightforward, as we have extra magic buffs. So you could just run a bunch of AoE or things that hit everything simultaneously and get a bunch of damage uh, that way. Anyway, as far as other things that we have going on this week, of course, a bunch of things for Easter going on. But as far as the standard stuff, we have Tuesday, we have the Primal War Faction event, which of course is Far Forest of Thorns uh, Faction. Uh, Wednesday, we have the 2022 Easter Bunny Pet, obviously cosmetic. Uh, but you'll be able to get that then and definitely make sure to do so as we have no clue when it will come back again. Maybe in 2023, who knows? Uh, which reminds me, we haven't actually had any of the Easter ones returned yet this year. Maybe we'll have that soon? I don't think we'd do this weekend. But uh, we might uh, pretty soon. Um, so that's going to be around the corner, hopefully. But yeah, we have that on Wednesday. Thursday, we have the class event for Archer. Archer uh, used to be pretty good. Uh, it's still a very well-rounded hero class. Uh, I do believe it's a bit more situational in the current state of the game, but definitely one that is um, useful, uh, mostly due to its typing and the fact that it still has that insta-kill chance. Uh, it's also one of the better green storm hero classes in the game uh, that tends to be used mostly for that purpose, like for green synergy teams, like if you're doing some kind of green infinite loop team, uh, can end up working out pretty well in those kind of contexts, like a truffle team and uh, other similar things. Anyway, aside from that, uh, this Friday we do have a faction event. Uh, the faction event, I believe, was for the heart one, the black heart one. Um, so we'll be having that. Obviously, this is a returning faction event, so if you haven't done pure faction for that and you want a three-day weekend instead of just a one-day Tuesday, you can end up doing that this weekend then and be able to get that done at a uh, better pacing uh, since uh, doing it on just a Tuesday is kind of hard to do. If you're going for 500 pure faction, obviously it can be done, uh, especially if you buy uh, a lot of potions and everything and get it done in kind of like two hours. But realistically, it does take close to like three, four, five hours, especially if you're playing out every single one of the battles. And having it over the course of a uh, weekend-long event for three days not only makes it uh, longer and that you get more sigils every single day but you also will end up being able to uh, have well I just combined them both together but you'll have more time to do it as well as more sigils to do it because you get three every single day and that would be nine instead of the three that you get on a uh, Tuesday event so overall it makes it a lot easier anyways Aside from that, as far as Soul Forge, uh, overall kind of skippable. Uh, the main thing worth mentioning here is uh, Scourge of Honor and Karandera. So Karandera is a utility troop used pretty much entirely for its curse. It does have a decent ability as well, however, generally most teams that are utilizing it are using it more so for its curse option. This is super situational and if you actually need it, however, it can be used in like a 4 times curse, 4 times stun team with Obsidious, and a few other really gimmicky builds if you just really want to get a curse done down in order to use a specific stats effect, uh, like Death Mark, Freeze, or you know whatever you kind of want to do strategy-wise with your team. So this is used on occasion if you want a curse option. Uh, there are much more, well, maybe not more efficient, but much cheaper options that you can end up going for, like Mirage Queen. Um, basically, instead of, uh, like Mirage Queen has a guaranteed chance to curse, but does not have a guaranteed chance to extra turn. Whereas this is basically inverse, where it has, you know, if you get the extra turn, it will trigger, so you're getting the extra turn. Uh, but then if you do, it's not a guaranteed, it's a half of the time it's going to be doing the curse. So it's kind of like the inverse of a Mirage Queen or something similar. So overall, very situational, but there are some gimmicky teams that really want to spam stats effects, or you just really need to, like, stun, disable, and a really important trait on the opposing team. In those situations, you can bring it out. It does have a pretty good Doom Skull poke, so how's that going for it? Aside from that, Scourge of Honor is basically Phoenicia, but true damage. It deals a bunch of true damage, gains some of its mana back, and also ends up cursing or diseasing an enemy. Uh, overall, um, it's mo mostly used for a double cast team, so if you are in a battle 
where you need to cast specifically twice to win uh, with a full AoE hit. Uh, it is pretty good in those situations because it gets pretty much half its mana back, basically meaning that you can double half mana it, uh, where you have half mana to get its first one, where you need 11, and then you're pretty much already at a point where you're only going to need about 10-ish mana or so, uh, because it's based on every single curse and disease enemy ends up getting some of its mana back. So you can uh, sometimes get the second cast off quicker than the first cast, which is kind of uh, weird compared to most troops, because generally speaking, the way that uh, pretty much every troop works in the game is that their first cast will be like maybe like half mana started or empowered or you know something like that like where they're going to have a more mana off their first cast or less that they need compared to their second whereas this guy is pretty much the inverse where his first cast he only needs about half or exactly half if you're using half mana start like off a wild folk and then for his next one he'll sometimes have more than half as in you know having more than 11 mana he'll have like 12 14 something similar depending on how many curses and diseases you have on the opposing team so can be very situationally useful i personally prefer Phoenicia, but he is really good in those double cast situations where you specifically need to cast something like this twice to win and it does synergize with true damage teams as well if you want to build it into some kind of true damage so uh neither are ultra high priority but things to consider uh also oddly enough king Avalon is both in the event key drop table and in the Soul Forge. I would not advise getting in the Soul Forge. You're much better off doing it with event keys. However, it is worth mentioning nonetheless. As far as weapons are concerned, uh, Elemental Bow is uh, probably your best bet. It's a really insanely good weapon. Uh, possibly even like top five as far as like these double man accumulating weapons. And among one of the better weapons in the game, mostly because of how good the elemental typing is, particularly the elemental hero class, of course. But ends up creating a bunch of uh, blue and green, which is super beneficial because that synergizes with things like Truffle, Bee Tricks, uh, uh, well, more so Truffle because of the elemental synergy, but um, you can end up getting a lot of mana that way. Uh, the blue feeds into the blue green feeds into a lot of really important um, uh, elementals. Uh, most importantly, uh, Mirage Queen itself, uh, the thing that gives all elementals 50% uh, mana start, uses blue itself. So if you're using something like a Truffle that uses the green, and if you use something like the um, the Mirage Queen that's going to utilize the blue and you're pretty much just getting all your mana off this weapon and uh, a lot of other elemental teams just have pretty much perfect synergy with that color accumulation so very very strong option uh, strong hero class to synergize with it and a lot of really good four times elemental teams that you can end up structuring around it if you so choose to uh, do so and if there's anything you would get in the entirety of Soulforge this week I would say that is the highest priority and most of the other stuff uh, not really too useful or just like utility stuff that um ever so occasionally gets used that you might consider if you're just missing them and you really want to have it as an option. Anyways, let's go over now and get into a bunch of teams for everything throughout the week. So let's start from the top all the way for the world event related teams. First off here, we have a Farce Troll uh, Elemental team. Not exactly uh, how you would normally build an Elemental Bow. However, we are on the restriction of only Farce of Thorns, so you kind of have to work within it. Uh, main thing that we're doing here is kind of what I mentioned with Yasmin's Chosen earlier, where we kind of just get a loop off of Yasmin's, Shaz uh, Yasmin's Chosen off of green and kind of just keep spamming that out until we win. Blue feeds into Farce Troll, which uh, doubles the amount of green on the board, uh, which synergizes even more. That will max out our Yasmin and Rowan. It will make it even easier to loop off of Yasmin. And then we basically just use Rowan as our finisher. Uh, after we basically have them in kill range, we just do one Rowan and they're dead. Uh, as far as the uh, lower one, we kind of already saw this in this one. Uh, normally, I don't mention one of those like special timed events things. However, this literally just happened last weekend. So if you pick this up uh, literally yesterday or any time uh, in the last uh, three days when we had the invasion week last weekend, uh, you would have access to this weapon. It's the uh, one that was just added. It explodes a bunch of uh, green gems and grants a random stats effect uh, to all elf. Uh, uh, it then <laughs> gives a random stats effect to all elf allies and then summons an elf troop. Which, uh, of course, can end up uh, recycling anything that ends up dying. And you're mostly just using it for its mana accumulation or to kill with Rowan. It's still kind of doing like the whole Farce Troll uh, Rowan kind of combo. And you could use that if you don't have Elemental Bow. Though I do advise getting an Elemental Bow this week if you can uh, scramble together the resources for it or already have it laying around. Anyways, uh, next up we have uh, things for the Primal Rift Faction. So Primal Rift Faction is happening this uh, Tuesday, of course, tomorrow. Uh, as far as teams, you can run a, it's a green-purple restriction, so you can just run Erskia Shield into Rowan. Of course, your hero weapon can be any color in the context of factions, so it being brown uh, is uh, doable. And you basically just keep spamming into Rowan. This can run the whole way, though it is advised mostly just using it for the first uh, 20 to 100. Though you can run it the entire way if you don't have too many other options. And uh, overall, the team is pretty easy to get. Erskia Shield from 250 wins on the um, Erskia Hero class. Rowan you get for free for Farce of Thorns, and if you need more, you can get an Event Keys this week. And Leprechaun um, is the only, like, RNG one, you gotta get it in Glory Gym Guild and VIP chest, but it's a low enough rarity that shouldn't take too long. You can also double up on Rowan instead of 
ends up laying up on uh, Leprechaun. Though with the particular banner setup that we have here, it is more so set up for uh, double Leprechaun. But you can go down the double Rowena route if you so choose. Uh, next up we have, uh, for the later battles there, you can end up going a uh, any variant of a Zugoth build. We do have access to it due to uh, purple. So you can kind of do that, do a bunch of big man accumulators and just kill them out that way. Of course, Thrall even better in the uh, context of factions because he normally has enough magic that he'll destroy the entire board, or at least a lot more of the board than he normally does for you because, of course, you have a lot of extra magic in the context of factions. And, um, yeah, later in the game, you'll be able to just do a 64 destroy. And earlier on in the game, you'll probably be able to do a number more like this. Uh, if you don't happen to have as many destroys, you'll still be able to get more than whatever you had. Uh, aside from that, we have uh, Pure Faction, of course. Uh, there are a couple different ways to do this, though the main premise is just spam Alder Father. Uh, by a couple different ways, I mean your first slot can actually be literally anything you want as long as it's uh, from the Primal Rift uh, Kingdom. Uh, I just happened to put a fourth Alder Father here, but uh, your first slot doesn't matter. Uh, you can put whatever you want there. Uh, the rest of your team should be Alder Fathers. Um, basically, what you want to do for this faction is have your first unit die, uh, and then replace it with a... Um, a green, or not green golem, sorry, a Trent summon. So you want to try getting the Treant into first slot. Uh, the main reason for this is Treant has 50% score reduction while being able to gain attack and armor. And of course, pretty much anything in the context of factions that can gain both a attack and a durability stat, in this case armor, is very, very strong. And just doing a golem, uh, or sorry, Trent into triple Alder Father is pretty much just enough to solo the entire faction. Uh, do keep in mind you're not allowed to start with that troop, uh, even though it's from Forest of Thor uh, even though it's from Forest of Thorns, it is not from Primal Rift, so it will not count as pure faction if you simply put a golem there. Or I keep saying golem. If you put a Trent there, it will not count as pure faction. However, if you summon it there and still win within the faction, it will count as pure faction. You just have you just can't start specifically with it as your unit there. Anyways, aside from that, uh, we have Archer Class event this uh, Thursday. Uh, a couple different ways to run this, so of course this is standard double AoE, works out pretty fine. Owl Riders mostly just here for the extra man accumulation and boost ratio off of Dawnbringer. And King Avalon just here for a nice AoE poke. And uh, yeah, pretty much pretty standard uh, class event. Uh, of course, uh, generally as far as class events are concerned, not really worth doing it beyond the free battles. But if you want to go claim those 25 gems and a little bit of XP towards your archer, if you haven't already maxed it, that's uh, a good time to end up doing so. Anyways, guys, if you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter uh, later this week if you celebrate. And I will catch all you guys later. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for watching.